control light was set to 8, functioning and signaling. Basically, their role is to kickstart the immune response when they recognise a virus. And they do this by activating nuclear factor Kappa B. Perhaps the real powerhouse here is NF Kappa B. Hi, it's your favourite pharmacologist. And I'm here to talk about Tall-like receptor 8 and its function in the immune system and its signalling pathway. I have no idea if anybody is remotely interested in this, but I am, so you're about to be. Plus, I promised to do this in my last video from Science Sunday about what I did for my Masters, because it will help contextualise that. So, it doesn't really matter which one you watch first, but I will put a link up here. Definitely watch both in either order that you want. All the references that I've been using are going to be in the description down below and I'm going to do my best to make sure that they are numbered and numbered correctly. Because I don't have a thousand subs yet, I can't just put a link to an outside source up here like I normally would with my own videos, so I'm just going to tell you which reference number to look at and then they'll be referenced properly with the number and probably Harvard referencing because I'm a nerd. Um, in the description. If you need any help, go down into the comment section below and ask me for it and I will give it to you. But while you're there, don't forget to like this video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel for more science videos, you should probably do that as well. So, what is the function of Toll-like Receptor 8 or TLR8 from this point onwards because it's a mouthful? Its job is to recognise pathogens through pathogen-associated molecular patterns. Each toll-like receptor has a class of PAMPs that it recognises. Toll-like receptor 8's pattern that it recognises is single-stranded RNA, mostly from viruses, but it exists elsewhere too. And yes, that does include COVID, but most other viruses too. Once these PAMPs have been recognised by the TLR8, it is then time to kick off the cascade and start the immune response. And then it becomes the immune system's problem to deal with the infection. How does it do that exactly? Well, here is this complicated diagram. Hello, editing Max real quick. So the original diagram that I used to put together this video was a little bit more intimidating than the one I'm gonna show you, but because it was by a company rather than a paper and hidden in the fine print it said, request permission to use pathway. I don't know what that means and I don't have time to request because it can take a while. So I've just found a more simplistic diagram by Azam et al 2019 uh, which is probably better to use because the other one was quite intimidating. You can still find the other one if you are interested in other toll-like receptors. I will still put a link but this is the one we're now using. You can also find this under reference number one in the description below. Sadly, I don't have the editing facilities to have it up on screen the whole time, so definitely click that and have my audio up if you can. So step one, tall like receptor eight, recognizes a PAMP. TLR8 then associates with myeloid differentiation factor 88, or what I'm gonna call mid 88. This is in reference number two. This is where the pathway splits, and we'll do the easy one first. MID88 interacts with interferon regulatory factor 7, which in turn regulates interferon production in response to infection. This is in reference number 3 if you want to know more about this. Interferon does so many things in so many different ways, but basically it's antiviral. Read more about it in reference 4 or let me know in the comments below if you want a whole video on it because I could probably make one. And that's that side of the pathway. So now let's move on to the complicated one and go back to mid-88 for a second. Mid-88 recruits interleukin receptor associated kinase 1 and 4 or Iraq 1 and 4. It's a mouthful. Iraq 4 phosphorylates, which it just means it activates, Iraq 1 and then Iraq 1 is released from mid 88. More on this part in reference 5. I'm gonna need to read this bit because it's a lot. Iraq 1 then goes on to bind to what we call TRAF 6 which is 
tumor necrosis factor receptor associated factor 6. Releasing it from its receptor and freeing it. Once it is free, it can then bind to TAC1. To read this bit too. TAC1 is TGF beta activated kinase 1. So just TAC1. It's easier for everybody involved. The activation of this then activates three transcription factor pathways J and K, or JUNK, P38 MAP kinase, and NF kappa B. If you want to know exactly how these three pathways are activated, go all the way back up to reference one and you can see it in the diagram. I'm not splitting the pathway again. <sighs> Unless you're trying to use it to cure something, it doesn't really matter, but they're in the references. You can also find more information about these transcription factor pathways in reference five as well. Just for the sake of doing it verbally, we're going to ignore those little pathways. So NF-kappa B is actually activated not by turning it on, but by turning off the inhibition. So you turn off the thing that holds it back, if that makes sense. I think that's a pretty cool way of turning something on. It's like, instead of turning on the tap by twisting the handle, you turn it on by unfreezing the pipes. So once it's released, it goes into the nucleus and it regulates gene transcription and it creates cytokines such as interleukin-1, IL-1, IL-2, TNF-alpha, IL-8, and IL-12. There are more, those are just on my list. And all of these interleukins and TNF-alpha, they basically turn on the innate immune response. The immune system's response to things it has not seen before. Check out reference number six for a review on NF-kappa B and an in-depth summary of its role not only in innate immunity but in adaptive immunity, inflammatory diseases, cancer, allergies and cell death. In TLR8 signaling, NF-kappa B acts like a positive feedback loop or a feed-forward loop. The interleukin-1 pathway is turned on by NF-kappa B and the interleukin-1 pathway turns on NF kappa B. You can check this out in reference number seven. I think it's really, really, really cool. So the second transcription factor that we're gonna talk about is junk or, and I have to read this one too, Cgen N terminal kinases. And in a very basic summary, which I'm not gonna go into now, it is involved in cell death and apoptosis. More on this in reference number eight. Lastly, P38 MAP kinase plays a huge role in inflammation, which is also a vital part of the innate immune system. It sort of helps to attract other cells as well as heat everything up. It also plays a role in apoptosis, the cell cycle, development, cell differentiation, and tumorigenesis. These functions depend on the cell type and how it was activated. You can check out reference number nine for more on this. And we have now reached the end of the TLR8 signaling pathway. We have now turned on all of our transcription factors and the innate immune system is on and dealing with the viral infection that we've detected. Perhaps next week's video can be the innate immune system and viral infection. What would you like to see? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get notified every single time I post a new video. Videos go up every Saturday at 6 p.m. UK time with at least one bonus video every single month. Let me know what you want to see. See ya.